MPOX has kind of two families. Um, they, you'll see in the newspaper they're called them clades, essentially a, a subfamily of the viruses. It's clade one and clade two. The public health emergency of international concern in 2022 was clade two, which comes from West Africa crudely and spread around the world. And about 190,000 people uh, affected, 190 deaths. Uh, a less toxic version of the virus than clade one, which is the one that comes from Central Africa. And that's what's spreading now. And it's a particular variant of that that looks as if it spreads far more easily. Mm. And starting in the Democratic Republic of Congo, where there's social un there's unrest, there's civil war, health services don't work, kids are in camps, and it just spreads like wildfire. And then it's spreading through other African countries and uh, and to other countries. I think Pakistan and Sweden at the time of us talking are the two other countries that it's being picked up in. But it will spread to other countries. And um, it causes sores on the palms of the hands, the face, so close contact, sexual contact as well, but it's not a sexually, it, it is a sexually transmissible disease, but not solely. You can catch it through the air, close contact, particularly in unhygienic circumstances. And it's a bit like chickenpox where you get a red mark, it bubbles up, and then scabs over. And it, when you are, and what can happen is you get multiple of these vesicles and scabs. They can become infected, causing septicemia. It can affect the eyes, pneumonia. And this particular one has a mortality rate, they think, between 4 and 6%. So it's significant. Yeah. There is a vaccine available uh, against mpox in Australia. Which strain, which type of mpox does it's it It's not an mpox against? vaccine. Right. It's a smallpox vaccine, and there are two vaccines available. Um, one is called Genios, and it's, it's um, engineered and much safer than the other one, which is a live smallpox, uh, an, what they call an attenuated live smallpox vaccine. So the first one's easier to give. The problem here is the vaccines are in the wrong part of the world, and there aren't enough of them. Um, so as usual, the rich world runs the wagon train into a circle and sorts itself out. When really what we, pandemics, and this is a pan, potentially pandemic virus from a part of the world where another pandemic started, which is HIV, um, and we don't focus enough on low-income countries and helping them out. Now, the manufacturer of the Genios vaccine says, well, they've got 300 doses, 1,000 doses they could release, which is obviously good and useful, but millions of doses are probably needed. Their share price went up 10% last week when WHO announced the public health emergency. Um, but they're saying, well, if you put in an order now, we can deliver next year. You can't just turn it on and millions of doses are produced. So, but yes, there are two vaccines, short, long answer to a short question. Uh, they are available in Australia and to high-risk groups. On to another topic then, uh, that's knee replacement surgery. New guidelines out saying that perhaps not all these procedures are absolutely necessary. Yeah, I think that we've been too trigger happy with uh, knee replacement surgery when people, people with very high expectations. It's a great operation when you're at the end of the road and you're in pain and nothing much is working. But what, this, um, what this, these guidelines, which come from the Australian Commission on Safety and Quality in Healthcare, say, first of all, when you go and see your doctor with knee pain, don't expect your doctor to order an X-ray or an MRI scan. GPs can diagnose osteoarthritis of the knee very easily and treat it very and treat it. And the trouble is, when you go and get, let's say, an MRI or a CAT scan on your knee, you discover stuff in your knee that you were never meant to see, which doesn't relate necessarily to your knee pain, mm -hmm. and it sets you on a course where you panic, the GP panics, and you end up in the hands of a knee surgeon. Now, knee surgeons are, you know, they, they, they're much less trigger happy with operations than they, used, than, than they used to be. And they're much more circumspect. You know, they say, look, you, you don't need it. We can wait. We can do this, that, or the other. But people get inflamed by language such as, oh, it's bone on bone in my knee. Well, that doesn't actually make any difference to the pain bone on bone. Lots of people got bone on bone without necessarily any pain. And what this new guideline emphasizes, if you lose some weight, even a kilo, that can have a dramatic effect on your pain from your knee. If you get generally fit, start walking, jogging, or what have you, that's good. And if you do knee exercises or lower limb exercises with a physiotherapy, that's also good. So things that you can do which can either delay the knee replacement or put it off altogether. And that's what this is about. There's plenty of business for knee surgeons in Australia. It's just what they want to happen, and others too, is 
the people who really need a knee operation to have it. And those who don't, hang in there because you might not need one.